morning everybody today i'm gonna to talk about act two of big million play act two of big million play starts in Wimpley street the house of professor henry higgins they are together now inside the laboratory of politics which belonged to professor henry higgins professor henry higgins shows now everything uh, about his equipment and tools of phonetics to Colonel Pickering. Colonel Pickering surprised that Professor Henry Higgins has many tools and many equipment like this. They are modern for him. He didn't see the same like them before. But in the half of this equipment and in the half of, of this show, uh, Colonel Pickering told Professor Henry Higgins that that's enough because he became exhausted, he became very tired. So he told him that we can complete another time. Okay? Suddenly, Mrs. Pierce, as a maid of Professor Henry Higgins, announced that there is a girl, a strange girl, okay, wants to meet Professor Henry Higgins. This girl dressed outlandish outfit. Professor Henry Higgins told her that uh, she can come in uh, the laboratory. When he saw her, okay, uh, he told her, you can go out. We don't need you anymore because we have many records, the same of your voice. So uh, we don't need your voice anymore because your voice is uh, lingo listen and we recorded many of it before. Uh, although he told Colonel Pickering before that uh, this is a chance that we can uh, record the voice or train you, okay, make exercise for you that we can record her voice or Eliza's voice. Uh, in your presence, but he turned back in his speech and refused her coming when he saw her clothes and when he saw her appearance. Okay, she told them that I need to be hired in a flower shop, in a flower shop, and I must be uh, ladylike, genteel, ladylike, genteel, to be hired in this flower shop. I must speak properly, okay, uh, English language properly, with its grammar perfectly, and I must, uh, I, and I must speak with a good pronunciation, with a good pronunciation. Uh, Professor Henry Higgins told her that I take uh, a huge amount of money from, this, from my students, and I teach the upper classes to speak properly, okay? But you, as a lower class or as a company girl, I never teach a girl the same like you. He offered, she offered him that she can pay uh, about uh, 25 cents, 25 cents uh, per hour, per hour. He told her that. Uh, it's a, a low price, it's a low price, okay? I must take a huge amount of money, more than that. Colonel Pickering in this moment interrupted their conversation and told Professor Henry Higgins that we can go in a challenge together, okay? Let's make a deal that you told me that Professor Henry Higgins told Colonel Pickering the, uh, yesterday, uh, the previous night, that he can make this girl like Duchess, lady like Duchess, lady like Duchess, lady like Duchess, throw six months and he can make her attend the ambassador's garden party. Okay? But if she has got a good ear and a quick tongue, it will be throw three months just only. Nothing more. Okay? Uh, Colonel Bickley uh, remembered him that he told him that the, the previous night. So, uh, Colonel Bickley 
offer them that we can go in a bit. Okay? Uh, if, uh, if you want a bit, okay? If Colonel Vickery win a bit, Professor Henry Higgins will pay all the expenses of this experiment. Of this experiment. But uh, if uh, Colonel Vickery lose this bet and Professor Henry Higgins won win this one, Colonel Vickery will pay all the expenses of this experiment. So who will win the experiment? Okay? We don't know we don't know right now, but we will see that. Well, uh, they just about this uh, issue, okay? Uh, Eliza uh, became very happy because they, they, ag they agreed about this experiment to teach her how to speak properly. Professor Henry Higgins called Mrs. Beers to take this rubbish or this garbage, okay? He meant Eliza uh, and scrub her, okay? Put her uh, under the shower and then scrub her and ordered, he ordered Mrs. Pierce to pair all her clothes and buy new clothes for Eliza. Mrs. Pierce listened, listened to, to, her, to her speech and they refused his way of speech. Told him, don't bully on the girl and don't deal with her like this because maybe this girl has a husband, okay? Or has a family, so they will come and make Troubles for uh, Professor Henry Higgins. He didn't listen to Mrs. Pierce's speech and he continued uh, to deal with the girl, with Eliza, uh, in a bad way. Colonel Vickery told him that she is a human. She is a human and she has feelings. So don't hurt her more than that, please. Okay, Mrs. Pierce took her, okay, upstairs put her uh, under the shower and when Eliza uh, heard about the shower she screamed she refused to take a shower because she hated uh, the hot water okay she didn't take any shower before she has a, she is very dirty girl but because uh, she accepted the shower or this idea, Professor Henry Higgins uh, gave her chocolate and told her uh, that uh, she may be uh, marry a rich man or a rich young man one day. Yes, he, uh, she listened to his speech and then she accepted to take a shower. Uh, Mrs. Beers took her upstairs to, take a, to give her a shower and suddenly Mrs. Beers came again downstairs announcing that there is a dust man, a dust man on the door. Okay, when the, the door bell rang, okay, Mrs. Beers opened the door and she saw this man. Who was this man? He was Alfred Doolittle. Who was Alfred Doolittle? Like I told you before, that he is Eliza's father. He came here to blackmail Professor Henry Higgins and Colonel Vickery. Colonel Vickery warned uh, Professor Henry Higgins that he came here especially to take money, not to take Eliza. Yes, and uh, uh, they know uh, what's his target. His target was the money, not his daughter. Okay, he told uh, Mrs. Pierce that yeah, you can give him a permit that he can uh, come in the laboratory to meet him. Uh, when Alfred Donatel came to the laboratory, okay, told uh, Professor Henry Higgins that I need my daughter. Professor Henry Higgins suddenly shook uh, Alfred Doolittle and told him that you can take your daughter, take her and go away out of my home. Okay, yeah. Alfred Doolittle, Alfred Doolittle, shook by this answer from Professor Henry Higgins and then he told him that what is the money for you and what is Eliza for me? Eliza is nothing for me, but the money for, uh, for, for me is everything. I need five pounds just only, okay, and instead of Eliza, you can keep Eliza with you and I can keep the money for me, okay. They offered him that they can give him 10 pounds, but he refused. He 
took five pounds only. And what is the, the target of his money? He will pay his money on his missus and his happiness, okay? And he has entertainment just only. This is Eliza for him. After finishing the shower, Eliza uh, came downstairs again and went to the laboratory. Okay, she saw uh, her father. Her father, when he saw her, uh, uh, firstly, he didn't know her because she became clean and she dressed a kimono uniform. Okay, it, it, she became very tidy one. So he didn't know her freshly. After that, when he know her, she told them, don't listen to this man. I don't need to know him again. I'll drop all my relationships with my family and with my friends, okay? But Henry Higgins advised her that you, uh, told her that you can drop your family but don't drop your old friends. You will need them one day, okay? And then uh, after too little, uh, go away and he, he went to his messes to pay for his wine and for his entertainment, okay? That, this is all about act two. This is all about act two. Inshallah, next time will be all about act three. Thank you so much, my best friends. Okay, and until we meet again, goodbye.